thank you. Good afternoon. Very nice to see you all for the first time just right now. <laughs> I would like to begin by welcoming you, but also pointing out that Studio C, the Chilliwack Creative Commission, are all taking place on the traditional and unceded territories of the Stalo people. We are here to do a couple of different things. So hello, first of all, to our studio audience. Um, it is, they, yes, absolutely give yourselves a hand. We're here making our YouTube video for this month. We do this once a month. It's called the Creative Third Thursday because it's for creative people and it's on the third Thursday of the month. So Creative Third Thursdays is best taken in live. It's great to mingle. You can mingle before, you can mingle after. And of course, we always have a guest that we will feature and we have a really good one for you today. So thank you for all being here in person to take in the Creative Third Thursday. Now, if you're watching this online, we understand that you can't always get in here, but you might still be interested in the guest or the concept. And so, of course, it is available for you as well on YouTube. Now, while we're talking about YouTube, we sure appreciate the use of this amazing Studio C in Chilliwack. I mean, this is an absolutely amazing facility. It's the best part of coming here for Creative Third Thursdays, quite frankly. And what a guy we have doing the work recording us today. So let's say thank you to our host and a remarkably good for only going once or maybe twice a year golfer, Tim McAlpine. Thank you very much, Tim. And Tim is, I guess, doing all of the work there, which kind of makes him our executive producer. But Tim, please just understand that means nothing with money and is frankly just kind of a place where we can now drop all of our disappointments. <laughs> so the guy in the producer's chair is responsible for all of this and we thank him. Now on the screen, if I step to the side here, are members of the Chilliwack Creative Commission. I am Darren Blakeborough and I am a member of the Chilliwack Creative Commission along with these other people here. Now, I was asked to fill in today for Jeff Edwards who did not think that he would be able to make it because he was filming a movie. As it turns out, Jeff did actually make it back in time and when I walked in, I was like, oh good, you can host and no matter how much I kept upping the offer, he said, no, you can do it. So here I am. Thanks for that, Jeff. But I want to say, with absolutely no hyperbole whatsoever, we are ridiculously happy that you guys have come today to see us. We were off for the summer, and this is our first one back, and we can't do it without you. So give yourselves a hand as well. So the Chilliwack Creative Commission, if you're wondering, is a committee of the Chilliwack Economic Partners Corporation, or SEPCO as the kids call it today. And if you'd like more information about the Creative Commission or SEPCO, you can go to Chilliwack um, Creative Commission, searching it at businessinchilliwack.com. Now, wave if this is your first time ever at a Creative Third Thursday. Yeah, excellent. That's probably the largest uptake of new people that we've had in a while. Now, wave if you've been here before, but it's been a while. Okay, a couple more. And I know some of you, wave if you're always here supporting this endeavor. That's right. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Creative Third Thursdays is where Chilliwack creatives meet other creative people. And those people that want to meet them. Now, if you're on social media, as horrible as I can be at times, make sure that you use the hashtag Creative Chilliwack. So hashtag Creative Chilliwack, share a photo, share your thoughts about what happened here today, the people that you met, the new ideas that you are now fostering. And remember, there's always a cool refreshment waiting for you at Creative Third Thursdays. <laughs> Now, last time I hosted for Jeff, who never opens this, I did and drank the whole thing immediately and sat there for the next 25 minutes during the interview with this big bubble sitting right there. And so I'm not going to do that today. 
plus Jeff here. Anyway, that's enough. That's our monthly housekeeping business. So just remember that this is all about providing the opportunity for creative people to meet with one another. And it starts right here in Chilliwack. Our guest today is a professional content creator specializing in high quality video and photography projects. In addition to custom client work, he runs Around Chilliwack, a popular website that highlights things like local businesses, restaurants, shopping, things to do in Chilliwack. He also created film ads as a way for communities across BC and Alberta to advertise through their local movie theaters. He works with independently owned movie theaters across Western Canada and works with Cineplex Media and Real Deal Media. So please put your hands together, give a warm Creative Third Thursday welcome to Matthew Hawkins. Hey guys. That was not pre-organized. No, we, no. It's weird how those things just organically happen. And we never went for a beer before this either. So. <laughs> Welcome, Matt. We've got a lot to talk about and a lot of things that I want to ask you and I'm sure that other people want to ask you as well. Because what you do is fascinating and your journey, how you got here is fascinating. But before we do that, um, there are a couple of videos that I want to take a quick look at to kind of lay some groundwork so of some, some of the significant work that you've done. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the Molson Coors timeline video that you did for them. All right. One more. There it is. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Over three years of my life, stressing out about a camera sitting on the roof across the highway, and for most of the time, just watching a lot not happen. <laughs> like, up until you saw the structure start going up, that was over a year, and it was like 20 seconds on video. And Molson's love the project so much that they're like, We need to get another camera. Then we set up another camera on the north side, and, it out. and then Bolton said, "We want cameras inside the building." So we set up 12 cameras inside the building. The ones outside were run on solar power, which was nice. I didn't have to worry about those. The ones inside were run off AA batteries and would last at best 21 to 28 days. So I was constantly going in, putting on safety gear and climbing up ladders and going up lifts to change batteries. And believe it or not, some construction workers thought it was fun to steal cameras, so... <laughs> we lost a few cameras. And the one coolest project that we did with this was we followed the tanks that they brought in from China, and we followed them all the way up the Fraser River, because they couldn't take them down the highway, they were too big. And uh, we did, like, drone stuff over top, and... We were in a fishing boat next to it, and it's already past that point now, but, yeah. So you did this and gave it to the Molson Coors Company, but is it available online anywhere? Um, the last I checked, it was on their Facebook page, but I don't know if that Facebook page is live anymore. Um, but yeah, this was over three years of my life, just checking on cameras, cleaning lenses, one time a giant inflatable was up on the roof and the storm hit and one of the cables snapped off, wrapped around the camera and camera almost fell off the roof. And the very first day that I set it up, I had to rent a lift to go up to the top because all the camera gear. 
and um, of course a guy from WorkSafe BC is in the parking lot, just happens to be there, <laughs> asking me if I have all the permits and everything, but I wasn't using like, I wasn't using a lift that you needed to have be chained up on, I was just using a scissor lift, which I made sure I was all covered to do, and but what are the chances the one day that I show up to set up a camera, WorkSafe BC just happens to be sitting in the parking lot? Apparently. We won't show all of this one. Yeah. This one isn't released yet. Okay. So, yeah, so this is the more recent one that you've this done. Is this is the most recent one. The downtown time lapse. Yeah. And it's not publicly available. So, this is a first viewing, and you actually had to get permission to show this. Yes. Uh, she's sitting right there. <laughs> we're only going to show a little bit. I know. You had mentioned to me, you were like, I'm going to show it anyway. And I thought that was exciting. <laughs> wow. And then you're like, I got permission. I'm like, do oh, you, okay. I guess do you, we'll you want to back up the bus on that one or what? <laughs> no, let's watch it. So yeah, this was on the roof, right next to the clock tower, obviously. And then we had one extra camera that we set up for a little while too that you get a few glimpses of. But again, um, it looks like it's a really exciting, fun project, uh, but it's really slow and boring. Like I'm taking a photo um, every hour for anywhere from eight to 12 hours a day. Um, and then once it's all done, I have to go through every single photo. Anything that's got something like an imperfection on the lens, um, sometimes there's rain, snow, sometimes you get pigeons, bees, you name it. Um, sometimes there's a plastic bag that just happens to like float by at the exact time it's taking a photo. Um, and you have to go through every single photo and delete anything that doesn't work. Anything that's a little bit too dark, anything that's a little bit too light, you gotta delete. So this is, we're just gonna show the whole thing, I guess. It's fascinating, though. It really is interesting to watch this come together. So, who was the client for this one? This was um, was Septo and Alger Brothers. So the developers for District 1881. Okay. So we'll come back and we'll talk probably more specifically about this as we go along. But, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'll go back first. Okay. So, you don't necessarily come from a, you know, quote, creative background. So, what is your background? I and then drew how pictures it, in kindergarten. How did it end here? Um, I always had a fascination with video. I remember my parents had one of those giant camcorders that you could put on your shoulder. The battery pack weighed more than the camera itself. <laughs> and I always wanted to use it, but my parents didn't let me. Um, and so, I had a fascination with video. But uh, it was in my my teen years, I got involved with a church camp and ended up uh, the last few years of high school going to church, straight out of high school, went into Bible college, ended up getting my degree in uh, pastoral theology and becoming a youth pastor. And then when I was a youth pastor is when I started really dabbling in video. And uh, I was using a Canon PowerShot camera that could only record 30 seconds of video at a time and started creating the just stupid videos like um, me and a buddy were just making like kung fu videos and um, <laughs> I had a newborn at the time and uh, making videos with him just messing around with you know stuff in the yard and um, and then started doing the stuff in the youth ministry that I was a part of and eventually became a media pastor and when it's when I became a media pastor that I came up with film ads. So, so as a media pastor what are, what are you doing? Uh, kind of what I'm doing now, just constantly generating content, like nonstop, trying to find interesting stories and take, at that time I was focusing a lot on video um, and just trying to come up with interesting, compelling content for people to engage with. Okay, so you go from pastor and then you move into the video world a little bit, creating there, and you mentioned film ads. What, what is that and how did that come about? Uh, it started here in Chilliwack. Uh, I remember sitting down to see Ocean's 12 and Transformers and sitting at Cottonwood and not seeing anything on screen, not even a radio playing, no music, nothing. And I contacted the then owner, Karen Bondar, who some people might know. Uh, and Karen and I, within a couple of weeks, came up with this idea of how we could start making a pre-show to show before movies. And uh, that's kind of where film ads started. Uh, it wasn't too long after that 
that uh, and it, it's bad. I look back at the content I was creating back then; it was bad. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. And, and the idea itself was was new because I mean I don't know if people remember you used to go into a theater and if the movie started at seven thirty and you got there at seven fifteen you had fifteen minutes to just sit there and stare at nothing. Well, you might be lucky enough to see the let's all go to the lobby. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is currently on my pre-show right now, actually. Because so. <laughs> people want to see it again. There's yeah. nostalgia, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so it was just a few months after starting that that the manager of the Salmon Arm Theater came down. Uh, he came to see a movie just randomly and uh, wanted to know who was running this. And uh, Sean Greek. And he uh, contacted me and went up to Salmon Arm to meet him and check out the theater up there. And Sean was the one that started connecting me with all these independent theater owners across BC and Alberta. So it was, it was happenstance, really. Like, you weren't necessarily out there... You know, there pumping once, stuff at first, but yeah, someone did it. Once, once Sean started int- making connections for me, um, I was working at the church at the time. So I'd work at the church Sunday till Thursday. I'd hop in my car Thursday after work. I'd drive up to Salmon Arm, Revelstoke, uh, Golden, down to Trail, and home, be back for Saturday night so that I could be in church on Sunday morning. And then I'd do it again the next week. And so what kind of content were you shooting? You were just producing, like, was it strictly advertising or were there also, like, the games and trivia things? And So at the beginning, it was just advertising. Um, and then I started messaging Cineplex Media on Twitter. And I got a phone call from the vice president because of my direct message on Twitter and said, hey, what do you have going on over there? We want to be a part of it. And... Uh, that's how I got connected with Cineplex Media. So I broker ads with Cineplex Media because uh, advertising agencies don't want to work just with one single theater. They want to have a whole reach. So they'll come to Cineplex Media and say, we want to buy all of BC. We want to buy all of Western Canada. And so my theaters that I work with get thrown in with that mix. And so then I negotiate things like prices for places like to- Toyota, Walmart. Uh, the RCMP have been on there. Um, currently, we have uh, co-op stuff going on on there. So, yeah. So, I've been working with Cineplex Media now for, I don't know, 12 years. Okay. So, just on the independent theater side, how many theaters do you have under your umbrella now? Currently, uh, I am officially um, 16 theaters across Canada. Like so, you, you just picked up a new one in Manitoba, right? Yeah. Dauphin, Manitoba. Anybody ever hear of it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Gorgeous, gorgeous four-screen theater that actually built their structure, their organization off of the Salmon Arm Theater, which is a nonprofit society that basically takes all their profits, either puts it back into the theater, or a lot of it goes into scholarships and bursaries for high school students. So they build things like parks and, yeah, so the Dauphin Theater does the same thing that Salmon Arm does. And then Gander, Gander, Newfoundland I'm working with as well. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So literally all across Canada. Yeah, it, it was kind of interesting. Last summer we went on a golf trip together, and so as we're driving through these small British Columbia communities on the way to the Kootenays, just all of a sudden Matt would be like, hm, "Yeah, that's one of my theaters." <laughs> and it was like all these cool small independent theaters, like I remember growing up with in small cities. And you are responsible for providing that content for them. Yeah, every night it's still I still get kind of weirded out by it every night. Seven and nine o'clock ish around that. I've got twenty plus minutes that's playing on every single screen and independent movie theaters in BC and Alberta, and it's weird because it, there's times where I, like I'm sitting in my pajamas on my couch on my laptop creating content that I put out to theaters. Um, I get phone calls from Shaw every now and then because when I upload content onto Dropbox at the beginning of the month, I'm uploading a lot. Yeah, 150, 200 gigs of content, and Shaw going, what's going on over there? Beginning of every month. And, so. and then your response should be, does unlimited not mean unlimited? <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, well, my response is usually, can you please increase the upload speed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so video, and you're doing that, and then you decided, I want to do something else. Like, how, how did, because video, while that is where you started, is only a small part of what you do now. So where did you go from there? 
Yeah, so video was always, it's still my passion. I love doing video. Um, but I met up with Amy Quarry in Quinell, uh, who started a project called Small Town Love. And Small Town Love was a book when it first came out. She was taking professional photos of different business owners. The biggest thing was that you were not part of a, a franchise. Uh, you actually a small independent business in Quinell. So she's taking professional photos, had a two-page write-up, and at the back there's coupons. And I remember taking a couple of those books from her and just sitting at my desk looking at them wondering, I'm working with all of these theaters across BC and Alberta, but I'm not really doing anything here in Chilliwack because I was no longer working with the Chilliwack Theater. And I was like, I want to work with independent businesses in, in Chilliwack and do something that's different than what I'm doing with the theaters. Because part of my revenue structure that I do with the theaters is any advertising that we bring in is a 50-50 split. So as soon as I get a Walmart contract, um, say it's for $1,000, immediately $500 is out the door. And I didn't like seeing that money just walk away all the time because I'm the one doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, what can I create? And I kept flipping through that whole small town love book wondering what I can do. And eventually came up with this idea because I was meeting so many people at the time. I used to be a constituency assistant for John Martin when he was MLA here in Chilliwack and taking care of all this social media content. And so because of John, I was networking with a lot of people and meeting some really interesting people uh, that I thought it'd be fun to do a podcast because I used to be doing a podcast with a failed project called Fishing Guys. And I love podcasting. And so I started doing this podcast um, around town in Chilliwack is what it started as. Uh, Tim McAlpine, the, the man behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz, um, he was the one that convinced me to drop the town and just call it Around Chilliwack. And so the, the whole reason for the logo is corn. We're known for our corn. And then the microphone, it all started with a podcast. And then that's map of five corners in the background. And so it's not like you put your camera down, you just changed the setting from video to photo. Yeah, so I was trying to do video with Around Chilliwack and it just took too much time. And so I was like, I can get a lot more done a lot quicker if I start taking photos. And uh, when I started, they weren't very good. As, as a photographer, right? Because it was something new for you and totally different than video. It's totally, yeah. People, because I shoot with a DSLR camera, people just automatically assume that I'm not shooting video, they assume I'm shooting photos. Um, and it's, it's two different beasts, completely different. And my photos at the beginning just, it was like I, I didn't know what I was doing, because I didn't. So how did you overcome that? Uh, Kevin Smith is one of my, my favorite guys to look up to. He's a big podcast guy, the reason I got into podcasting. But his whole premise is like, um, imitate before you can really create. So find people that you, you look up to, find people the work that you like, and start imitating, figuring out how they do what they do. Um, you look at all the great movie directors out there. They all have people that they stole ideas from from the beginning until they kind of find their own groove, find their own style. And so uh, I just started looking at different people that I admired their photography and went, well, if I start kind of doing what they do, then I can find my own groove. So one of the things that I like doing when I shoot is um, I call it dirtying the frame. And so like you see Brit at Blossom Floral Design, I'm shooting through some flowers while she's taking an order of stuff. Um, this one of Jenna, who actually Jenna is, works with around Chilliwack. She helps create content, um, does a fabulous job. Um, I told her to stand in the store and I'm out on Wellington or on Yale Road in front of Magnolia and Oak shooting her through the window, which is cool because you get a, gla uh, a glare of uh, District 18 and one across the street. And I just, I just started seeing what other people were doing that I like doing and created my own. Um, same thing here, just shooting over someone's shoulder. Um, just trying to trying to see things from my perspective, giving people a different angle and idea of what life can be like. It's my daughter at horseback riding lessons. Okay. Um, it, it's one thing, though, to say, 
I want to do something in Chilliwack. Chilliwack matters to me. I want to help businesses out. I want to get better photography. How do you go from that idea to actually selling it to businesses and making this all happen? And I know in, in the uh, intro voiceover, it referred to the website around Chilliwack, but mm -hmm. that's more than just a website around Chilliwack. Yeah, I, I can't even tell you how much content is actually on the website. I stopped looking a long time ago. Um, during COVID, around the around Chilliwack website, I started posting what businesses were open and which ones were providing delivery and or curbside pickup. Um, I've never seen numbers on the website like I did during the lockdown. Um, we were averaging over 100,000 views a day. Um, people wanted, were like, people didn't know what's going on, obviously. And so the website became like a, this sort of central community hub for people to check in and see what's going on. And be able, instead of like trying to go to like all these different websites or social media stuff, um, people start going to around Chilliwack and getting all that information. But um, with that and then just um, the social media channels, just trying to like I use my Instagram stories to highlight events that are going on because I can't put everything on there. If I put everything on there, I would be putting like people's lost dogs or cats. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like people will ask yeah. me, but uh, or like people have like um, the roller derby that goes on NWO. They they want to be featured, and I'm like, well, I can only feature so many people, um, but I'll put you on the story because then at least you get some sort of notice. Um, but at the beginning, uh, I everybody starts with uh, one follower, which is usually yourself, and uh, <laughs> and that's where I started. And I I didn't really charge a lot. I didn't charge anything, to be honest. I had uh, a couple people that sponsored me. Uh, Ron Laser, who's here right now. Um, Tim McAlpine. It's people that just believed in what I was doing um, for a very nominal fee. Basically, just to pay for my podcasting equipment is what it was. And then as the audience started growing, I started... I had numbers to be able to go back to and say, hey, we've got 1,000 followers, we've got 2,000 followers, we've got 3,000 followers. This is what I can create for you. Now I can start charging. And so I was building a platform to basically show my own work. Who were some of the first businesses that bought in that are still with you? Um, the Beverage family was the very first official, like, I don't know you, we have no connection um, contract that I got. And so for years, I shot, I've shot photos of Major League Two. And now I take care of their Sardis liquor store, taking photos for them for that. So the beverage family has been a great connection for me that I made with Tyler, who's just an awesome human being. So, so are, are you at the point with around Chilliwack and this part of it anyway that people are now coming to you and you don't have to go cold calling anymore? Uh, it's a mix. There's some clients that I'd like to go after, and then there's some that do contact. And like about Pilates, they contacted me in June and did some content for them brand new Pilates studio that she works with women in Sardis, Webster Landing area. And um, she just wanted to get the word out that she had lessons available and what she offered. And, cool. Yeah. We've got some more of your work here. Yeah. Uh, Shem Golf Course is one of the, uh, one of my longer clients too. Um, it's an underrated golf course in Chilliwack. Some of the best greens. I, I happen to golf a little bit. Um, a lot of it and uh they like what an amazing backdrop like yeah. it's yeah we, we were actually talking about this in one of my classes yesterday that we take it for granted that when you really take a look around at our backyard we are so ridiculously privileged this is amazing where we live like the fact that there's a golf course right there yeah yeah uh this was from the western canadian baseball championship that was held on Fairfield Island. This is Team Chilliwack right here. Um, Robbie Snooks, who I used to be, we, I used to have an office in here and Robbie did too. Um, him and I are friends and he said, I, we need someone to shoot. And so just kind of an exciting home plate finish. Just some of the random sort of stuff that I pick up. People ask what I do for a living. I'm trying to describe it as best as possible. I do make money. Um, I can pay for my golf. <laughs> and uh, 
I just get sort of sometimes people go, hey, can you shoot this? And just so happens that because I push myself to learn photography more and more that I can say very confidently and positively, yeah, I can shoot that and get you some great results. Was he home safe in that one? He was, yeah. If you go back. Yeah. I can't, I can't go back. Or can I? Can't go back. You can see he dropped oh, the ball. Yeah. yeah. See, he just missed the ball. Yeah. That's good. Because I took a quick look at it first, too. I'm like, I can't believe you embarrassed him. I'm like, oh, that's Chilliwack. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. No. Chilliwack scored. Nice. It's sad, sad to say, though, that Chilliwack lost the game. But, yeah. So you've got your mitts in all different aspects of, of the creative realm. Do you have a favorite one, a, a favorite thing to do? Um, well, this is from the Nick Taylor event last week. Um, yeah, that's our RBC Canadian Open champion right there, Nick Taylor, who is being paid to hit balls onto the 12th green over the water at Cultus Lake Golf Club. So he was raising money for Jumpstart. Um, just a great, great human being. Uh, favorite thing for me to do, I was a part of last two years ago, almost two years ago, the Chilliwack Independent Film Festival had a 48 hour, um, which you helped my son with uh, writing the score for, or some of the music for that short. So we, we had to, we had 48 hours starting Friday night, 7 p.m. and had to be done by 7 p.m. on Sunday night. So we had to write, shoot, edit, and share a short that was under five minutes. That was that was a lot of that was one of my favorite things that we ever did. Um, it just complete nonsensical, like a little weird, but but uh, so much fun. But artsy, yeah. Yeah, and you get to kind of take the stuff that I'm learning that people are paying me to learn to do, and just use it for fun. Because a lot of times when I pick up my camera, it's work related. It's because I'm trying to make a revenue. Um, I can't pick up my camera in front of my kids too much anymore because they get they they're sick and tired of me taking their photos um, or making videos with. I used to make all sorts of fun videos with them, um, but now that they're teenagers, they could care less. And, and Matt Matt's a little humble as well. His uh, his short did win the best uh, forty eight hour short. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yep. So again, like this. I'm shooting through the golf cart here and I'm watching Nick as, um, I don't know, someone's offering him if he wants a White Claw or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> which I found out he doesn't like White Claw. But I'm just shooting through the golf cart. I think that's Sarah DeZaman in Blurred Out right there. I don't know. Um, but just, I try and find angles that people don't always see things. And people ask me about photography. I make it up as I go. But at the same time, when people ask me about like shooting their kids and stuff, nobody wants to see you shooting your kids from up here and down at the top of their head. The same way that kids don't really enjoy looking up at you and seeing your double chin all the time. Um, it's true. <laughs> so I try and tell people like if you're shooting your kids, like get down on their level, try and see the world from their perspective, because it's a whole lot more interesting than us looking down at them all the time. So the same thing here. I'm just trying to. Just trying to be like a fly on the tree at the golf course, trying to get some shots of Nick Taylor being Nick Taylor. That's a, that's a really striking photograph. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you have an unusual road that has brought you to this point. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and as you pointed out, you're still kind of learning on the go and doing things, a little seat of the pants sometimes. But if there's somebody out there watching this right now and they're interested in doing the kinds of things that you do, is there something that you've learned up to this point that you're like, you know, I wish I'd known that at the beginning or that I'd done that sooner that you could tell them about? Um, fail sooner. <laughs> I've started and failed many projects more than I've succeeded at. Um, but the biggest thing is just start. Don't, don't sit around. I know too many people. When I tell them I do the theater advertising stuff, I know people that go, oh, I thought about that idea years ago. <laughs> the biggest thing, though, is you didn't do anything about it, and I did. Yeah. Right? I might not be doing it the best. Uh, there are probably people that are far more qualified than I am. But the thing is, I've, I've put the kilometers on. I've driven across all of Western Canada. 
Um, I've flown up to places that I don't want to fly back to. <laughs> Um, but I've built the relationships, I've sent the emails, I've made the phone calls, I put in the work because I was willing to get started at the beginning. And like my pre-shows at the beginning were like six minutes long on repeat. So imagine showing up to a movie 30 minutes early oh. and you're going to watch that thing five times, the same trivia five times. On average now our pre-shows are 21 to 25 minutes long. And there isn't, the only thing that'll repeat in that is, um, is local ads. Otherwise, all the trivia, viral videos, entertainment stuff is all fresh throughout that 21, 25 minutes. So imagine six minutes on looping for 30. Yeah. It's bad. It's just so bad. But, I mean, everything is kind of like that at first. Yeah. You don't know. You got to start. Yeah. If you don't start, you'll never know. So... What's the future hold? What's your next great creative endeavor? I don't know. <laughs> um, the COVID was a massive hiccup in terms of for working with theater advertising. We're finally, not finally, we're getting back to where we used to be before COVID. We're still not even there yet. Um, people are still hesitant to want to advertise in movie theaters because they think attendance is still bad. Um, attendance is almost as good as it used, was before COVID. Um, we're starting to see massive box office hits again. We're starting to see studios saying, hey, we tried the whole streaming online thing. It's not as good as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. We need that movie theater experience for people. So we're starting to see that shift again. Um, around Chilliwack, I want to expand and grow. Um, around Chilliwack has nothing to do with me but it, everything to do with me um i don't want it to be mine forever i i want it to continue on in someone else's hands at some point um same with the theater advertising i'd like that to be able to be passed on but finding someone that has that sort of passion and drive and uh belief in local independent businesses, it's hard to find to the point where like you, like my first year of running film ads, I, I didn't make any money. And then I signed up with Cineplex Media and my first two months of Cineplex Media, I made I made more money that month than I did my entire year, the first year I was a youth pastor. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's impressive or if it's just really sad how much money I was making at the church. It can be both. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gets, fail sooner, get started quicker, and um, just be ready for the ride because it's, I, I wouldn't change it. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess you never really know, do you? No. And, but the thing is, you don't unless you start. Yeah. yeah. Well, fascinating. I mean, there's, it's, it's such an interesting journey. And that's kind of the beauty of Creative Third Thursdays is you get to meet people that you might know and you might not know. And they all do something cool and creative. And you start thinking that everybody's kind of the same. And you really find out that they're not from all different places coming from different backgrounds and with different dreams and hopes and ideals and all just trying to do something that spurs joy. And thank you for doing that with us today, Matt. Thanks, there. Thanks, guys. A huge, huge thank you to Matthew. And of course, a huge, huge thank you to you, our studio audience. So please give yourselves a round of applause. And always remember, four out of five leading doctors say that the Creative Third Thursdays is best when taken live. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, they're, I'm, well, I'm fairly confident that they would say that if I asked them. But <laughs> Tim, thank you, as always, for this great location mm -hmm. and the great work that you do. And thank you to our YouTube audience. Remember to like and share, hashtag Creative Chilliwack, and your next Creative Third Thursday is on October 19th. 
Stay tuned for details of your guest. There's cold drinks out in the lobby, so cheers, everybody. Thank you.